to everyone, welcome. Welcome to my podcast, Root, God's Amazing Love for You. This is your pastor, Yati. Welcome, women out there, seekers, global, wide. You all are so welcome. We are in day three of our fifth week in this study on the book of Root. And today we're going to face Jesus Christ as we started two days ago with the kinsman redeemer. Today I'm going to talk about worthy is the lamb. And our verse of today is worthy is a lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and power and glory and blessings. Revelations 5 verse 12. Let's begin with a prayer. Worthy is the Lamb. Every praise and honor is yours. Worthy are you Jesus Christ. Every witch, every riches and knowledge and leadership, you're worthy, Lamb of God, my Lord. We honor you with our lives. Make us as an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let we bring peace and love. And guide us with your spirit in the journey that we walk in Jesus name. Amen. So yesterday we looked at the first qualification of a kinsman redeemer and how Jesus fulfilled that qualification. Now remember, you are loved with an everlasting love. Today we'll look at the second qualification Do you remember when Boaz went to the nearer kinsman and offered the land and root to him? That man turned down the offer. Do you remember that man's name? He is unnamed. Forever his name is forgotten. He was unwilling to make the sacrifice to purchase the land that included Ruth and Naomi. But Boaz was willing. No matter the cost and no matter how it affected his reputation, Boaz was willing to make sacrifices to take on Ruth and Naomi and their land. In the same way, Jesus is willing to redeem us, no matter the cost. Romans 5 verses 6 to 8 says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though... Perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, missing the mark, making errors, Christ died for us. The love that Jesus has for us is a deep, sacrificial love. You are so loved. Let's take a look at the second qualification 
of Kinsman Redeemer. So if possible, turn back to your lesson from yesterday. What was the second qualification? Now read Genesis 1, verse 1 and verse 26 to 28. Let me read it for you, because for some it's maybe not possible. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Twenty six to twenty eight. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Who does the earth belong to? And who was to have dominion or rule over it? The earth belongs to the Lord because God created the heavens and the earth and all that is in it. But God gave man the responsibility to rule over the earth and all, 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 all. It's not in the good direction. And it's not in the 21st century, which some many, many, many people hoped. But look. Read Genesis 3, and I will read it for you. Verses 1 to 7, in 22 to 24, and Romans 5, verse 12. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat from fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman, For God knows what when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good, good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of it and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made covering for themselves. Then 22 to 24. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, 
he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden a cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Now in this narrative story, you need to be careful how you really translate this. You have to understand that over centuries, translations were missing the real words of the right saying. You need to be careful that you don't punish or judge. When you study Genesis and the Word of God, you need guidance of the Holy Spirit. It was Satan in Jewish or Satan in our language that triggered mankind. We cannot judge that it was Eve who seduced her husband to do so. He was with her and he took. So here we are in blaming other women or blaming for over centuries. We need to be careful. They both were in the Garden of Eden and they were triggered. And as you heard and probably know, Satan knew exactly what would happen. And oh, he was so happy. We need to be wise to study and to open our mouth and speak about it. What I show here is who was giving the dominion on this earth and who was given in the creation. It is God and God alone who is the upper ruler of the whole creation and he gave the full dominion where we miss the mark in so many ways and of course of the fall things were not working well so we will move further in our study and for those who are seekers we'll see why Boaz and Jesus were both in their ways kinsmen and Jesus Christ kinsman redeemer they took something to make it completely new Boaz gave Ruth a beautiful life and he bought everything also Ruth and lived and were blessed so what is Roman says Roman Roman chapter 5 verse 12 therefore just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin and in this way death came to all people because all sin A battle began in the Garden of Eden, who entered the garden, bringing sin and death with him. And what were the consequences of man's disobedience? And man's is mankind, is earthling. It's the first created man. The serpent, a manifestation of Satan, of Satan, 
in Revelation 12 verse 9, entered the garden and tempted the woman to sin by eating of the forbidden fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Eve ate and gave it to Adam, who also ate of the fruit. It was at this point that man fell, and sin and death entered the world. God drove Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden because of their sinfulness. What do you learn in 1 John 5.19? Who presently rules over the earth? Let's go to 1 John 5.19 We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know that the earth does not rightfully belong to Satan, but to the Lord who created it. And I will read for you Revelations 5. For those who can read, of course, please do. 5, 1 to 14. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamp, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamp had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell. They fell down before the lamp, each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy. <coughs> Excuse me. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God. Persons from every tribe and language and people and nation who have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousands. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praised and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped.
We will look at this in more detail later in our study, but in the future, who is going to redeem the earth and take it back from Satan? But this belief that the sealed scroll in Revelation, taken from the hand of God by the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, we represents the title deed to the earth. Jesus Christ is the only one who is worthy to take the scroll, redeem the earth, and take back what was lost under Adam. This will put an end to Satan's rule over the earth. Jesus will redeem the earth and rule and reign over it. Look at Revelations 5. 9 to 10 and they sang a song new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation you have made them to be a kingdom and priest to serve our God and they will reign on the earth and Revelation 20 verse 4 to 6 I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God they had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands they came to live and reigned with Christ a thousand years the rest of the dead did not come to live until the thousand years were ended this is the first resurrection blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection the second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Who will also be ruling and reigning with our kinsman, Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Believers will rule and reign with Christ as God had originally intended for them to do. We will receive back what was lost under Adam let me give you some questions is your heart leaping right now at all of these connections between Ruth and Boaz and Jesus and us share what you are feeling and how God is speaking directly to you through his word I hope today's reading has filled you to the brim with hope I am simply in awe of how God has orchestrated this picture of his deep love for us. Praise his holy name. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might in honor and glory and blessings. If you look at this world, wherever you live on the globe, what do you see? What is your experience? Look around you, close by. Look in your church, or look in your neighborhood, or look at your friends. What do you see? What do you experience? We living in the 21st century, what do we see? If we are able or were having a desire to study history, how did you look back and where you started with historical facts of mankind till now? What do you see? What do you experience? 
if you are a biblical scholar, how far did you go back? How did you reflect it, your education in this world? And so many, 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 many thousands of years back till now, what do you see? People out there, we have work to do. Satan is doing a pretty much good job and understand me well. I'm totally against. Look how many people die. How many victims? How many refugees? Where are we? What are we doing? Evil is out there. Let the church move the world. But not the world move the church. Amen. May the peace of God be with you and stays with you. And may his light shine upon you. And keep you safe. God bless. And go with God. Bye-bye. This is your pastor Yeti.